Okay, so even though I'm like halfway through a Tesla coil build that I haven't touched in weeks that I need to get done, that I want to get done, I decided to do another project. But this could be a quick, easy one uh, weekend build. Uh, well, easy is relative. Um, you can buy these. Uh, this is a uh, spinny uh, LED sign. All this tape is temporary. I'll explain that in a second. And um, so a friend of mine told me about these. And so I'm like, well, I have to get one. This is only like 35 or 40 bucks. Kind of depends on where you get it. I got mine on eBay. It was like 35 bucks on eBay. I think it was free shipping. And um, it's a kit. You have to put it together. This one has 56 LEDs. Actually, 56 LEDs per arc. So 112 LEDs. And uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the build. Obviously, I already built it, so this isn't really a build video. There's a bunch of other build videos showing people soldering all this stuff on. I don't want to do a video showing you how to solder parts on. I don't claim to be a professional surfaced mount solderer type person. Um, there's a bunch of different methods. My methods may or may not be the best. Uh, it does work, but um, I don't want this to be, or I didn't want it to be like a step-by-step -step build video. I just want to talk about things that I came across. I want to talk about more of like how to get stuff programmed to it because for me that was one of the hardest parts and um, so let's just talk about the unit uh, first in general it uses a motor that spins this part and it uses wireless power transmission there's a power supply board right there that is driving a coil there and that is transmitting its voltage, kind of like a transformer, well actually just like a transformer, to another coil that's glued to the bottom of the spinny part. And that's how it sends power from the, from the main input into the circuit board here. Now when you get the kit, the, uh, the square I see here, which I assume is the processor, is already soldered in place. This IC over here is also soldered in place. I'm assuming that's the EEPROM or the ROM, something maybe. And what you have to solder in is the photo detector, or the uh, IR receiver, and all of these rectangular ICs here. These are some kind of LED driver. You also solder on that one, the battery, the four post four post terminal, the little switch, and a whole bunch of resistors and capacitors and diodes. And a couple of capacitors here on that end and all of the LEDs along that edge uh, you have to solder on, which we'll talk about that here in a little bit. There is also some parts on the bottom of it. And I don't know if we'll get a good view of it, but there's a crystal and an IR receiver here, and there's an LED right there. So that's, I'm assuming, for the timing. So I'm assuming as that turns around, the receiver picks up the signal there, and so it knows how fast it's turning, so the image is correct. Now one thing I noticed different on mine, the instructions tell you to solder on four diodes right around in here. Well, mine didn't come with that. Mine instead came with this little square circuit card here. Let me see if I can focus on that. And that's not in the instructions. That little circuit board is already soldered together. And what you have to do is right there it's marked positive and negative. You need to put that on top of the main board, solder a jumper wire, through the two holes for positive and negative, solder it on the side here and on the back side. And the power coil wires, see if I can get that coming in here, come in the back side there. So where the wires from that coil go through, they go through this board and then they solder to the top of that square circuit board there. I'm assuming that this is an upgraded power source 
It kind of looks like a type of buck converter, maybe, or a boost converter. I don't know. I'm not really, not really uh, into no and all the different types of converters. But you're soldering that on right on top, and they are labeled L1, and they're labeled positive and negative. Uh, you, again, you just have to put little jumper wires. I just use like resistor legs, uh, scrap pieces that I just soldered through, and. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now I do want to talk about the LEDs along the edge. They get soldered to the edge. The instructions are pretty clear as far as parts placement. Um, well, except for this. Again, that updated power supply. That was not in the instructions because uh, apparently they updated the whole thing, but they never updated the instructions. And we'll talk about where to get the instructions or how to get the instructions here in a little bit. Um, but the instructions tell you to put the LED upside down on a surface, and uh, so if this is the LED, and then take your circuit card and lay it on its edge, and then solder the edge, solder the edge. And uh, that's probably about the best way to do it. There's a few different techniques. Uh, for example, what I tried at first was on the, on the circuit card along here, uh, you've got the solder tabs or pads. So I tried putting a blob of solder on that side and then a blob of solder on the other side. The problem with that then, if you look at the edge, say that's the edge, and you got a big blob of solder here and a big blob of solder there, uh, when you put that over the LED, well, the LED it actually kind of would sit like that. You can't, you couldn't see the LED. Uh, at least I couldn't. Uh, the blobs of solder were too big, so I couldn't tell how aligned the LED was. So what I started doing was I would put a blob of solder on one side and then lay the edge on the LED, and then you could see that edge of the LED. You could see that solder tab, and then you could see that that was square and lined up and centered. Then I would take the soldering iron on this side and touch it to melt that on, to solder that on, then I could go through with the soldering iron and then put a put a bit of solder there to hold that on. And uh, it took a few tries. The first few LEDs I put on were a little bit crooked, um, but as I went through and kind of got a handle on it, I kind of got into a rhythm. Um, the, uh, the first arc that I did, I don't know, I should have timed myself, but the first arc I did took twice as long as the second arc that I did. Um, and again, you know, the first few, I think the first few I did were down here where they wouldn't be noticeable as much. But, um, but yeah, the first few I did were kind of crooked, but they got better as I went. And, um, and then you have to put those in and you just got to bridge the gap. You just have to bridge the gap along there, soldering this to here. And uh, it's a little tricky. If you get too much solder, it will... You know, it'll bridge between two of them that you definitely don't want. Um, but you need enough to bridge the gap between this board and this board. And I should probably be using something else to point with in my finger so I can kind of show better. But you need to bridge a gap between this board and this board, but not bridge between legs here. Also, be careful not to bridge between legs of those ICs there. Uh, for one thing, um, I should have said already, this is a good kit to practice um, soldering, but it is not a beginner kit. If you've never soldered surface mount components, I highly do not recommend this kit. Uh, this is probably my third or fourth surface mount project, and it was a little difficult. I struggled a little bit. Uh, that's not to say you can't do your first. I mean, maybe you got a natural gift for it, and uh, you'll find no problem with it at all, and, Maybe you could do it for your first project. That's perfectly fine. Um, just personally for me, I think if I would have chosen this as my very first surface mount soldering project, um, I would like to say I would have got it done, but it definitely would have been much more of a struggle. And um, so let's talk about the instructions. Uh, when I got mine, there were no instructions. It came with nothing. And I was watching another YouTube video, and they had a link to the file for everything. 
I downloaded that link. My computer wouldn't open it because it said it was a virus. And so I deleted it, got rid of it. And then I read a comment that said, you can get all the information from Banggood. So I went to where Banggood sells this and they had a thing that said, click here for documents. And I clicked that, downloaded it. And keep in mind, this takes like half an hour to download. Downloaded it. When I opened it, it looked like hundreds of pages of hieroglyphics and Chinese and just a bunch of just random stuff. What I didn't realize was that that was an RAR file, and I'm not familiar or was not familiar with RA files, RAR files. So this is what it looks like when you download that file. And I don't know if you can see this or not. We'll zoom in here and focus. It comes up as this SKU file. This is what you want. And again, you can get this from Banggood or a link from the other video. If I remember, I'll put a link to that one in the description of this video. Um, now, what I did, I actually contacted the people I bought this from and told them, there's no instructions. I need instructions. And they replied back and they said, uh, we're sorry the unit's damaged. Uh, do you want to replace it or do you want your money back? And I replied back and I said, it's not damaged. I just need instructions. And they replied back and they said, we're sorry for your inconvenience. Uh, if you like, we could issue you a refund. And I'm like, I don't need a refund. I need the instructions. Finally, I realized that they don't read English. So what I did was I retyped that, um, I retyped my email stating that there's nothing wrong with the unit. I just need the instructions. And I went to an English to Chinese translator and I cut and pasted those Chinese characters into the email and resent it to them. Uh, and this is all through the eBay eBay uh, uh, messaging. And right away, they sent me the instructions. And um, and it was this file here, the same one that I had already tried a couple of times before. And then I'm realizing, oh, maybe... Um, and then I, I kind of noticed that it's an RAR file. So I Googled, what is an RAR file? Because I didn't know. I'm, I'm kind of computer stupid. And the Google told me that I need to unzip this with, um, with something like 7-Zip. So I tried 7-Zip. And I downloaded 7-Zip. And that just did not work at all. So then I tried WinZip. Um, so use WinZip to unzip it. And that will then give you this folder right here. This is what you want now. So after this is unzipped, you'll get this folder here. And there's a few other folders that I, I created. I created this one just titled My Images. I created this one just called Programmer. Because once you open this, there's a ton of stuff. Let me show you what's in here when you open that program right there, or that file. When you open that, you're gonna get all of these, all of this information. And, um, these are some build figures. These are some fabrication instructions. These are the instructions you need. So all the instructions are in here. But then you've got all of this stuff, which I'm like, what in the heck is all of this stuff? And the one you want, now I recommend when you get this, go ahead and open these up and take a look. Um, I couldn't figure out most of it. It's, I mean, there are like random figures and pictures and things in here. But this is the one you want right here that says PC Software Change Word. That's the one you want. Click that open. When you open that file, you're going to get... Oh, and I know I could use my computer screen and click and show you, but I don't have a screen capture thing set up. And those aren't normally the type of videos that I do, so I'm not going to install it. So this is what we're going to do for the day. I know it's possible to show you on my screen, but yeah, this is how I'm doing it. So, you know. Um, it works. So after you open, again, PC software change word, you get this. And one other thing, though, um, seems like I'm forgetting something. Um, oh, I was having a hard time getting stuff to open and load. And one thing was... For me, I would get a message that says, uh, you know, unsupported characters. You notice up here it has all these Chinese characters. Uh, it didn't like that. So a friend of mine um, uh, told me uh, that I need to 
take that file and just save it somewhere else to get it out of this. That's why I have a folder that I just created that says um, programmer and I put everything in there. So I basically just copied that, pasted it into a completely other, completely different folder and then it didn't have those. And um, so thank you, Sean. That was some good advice and it worked. Again, I wouldn't have been smart enough to figure that out on my own. And we have these uh, LED using instructions and that is, I printed those out and it's talking about, the first thing it talks about is installing the driver for the programmer, this thing right here. You're going to have to buy one of these if you want to program your own stuff. Um, this is a USB to TTL adapter. There's a few different ones. And this one is a CP2102, something like that. Um, I'm pretty sure, I, I, made, I made a note here, so I'm pretty sure it's CP2102. That's not the exact one they call for here. They call for a PL2303, but you have to download the driver for that. I did not get the driver in all of that software that I got. I think you only get that if you buy the programmer from them. I just bought this one on eBay. And one issue I was having was when I would connect this to my, uh, to my display, my computer wouldn't recognize it. So I just Googled CP2102 driver. I downloaded that driver. Again, I had to use WinZip to open it. And then it worked perfectly fine. So you'll need one of these. More on this in a second. And you need to download the driver for it. And... And it walks you through connecting it to your display. And one thing you really got to be careful of, the receive on one end goes to the transmit of the other. The transmit then goes to the receive of the other. Do not connect receive to receive and transmit to transmit. You'll fry your display unit and it's not going to work. A few other people have already done that. I read some comments on some of the other videos, so I kind of had a heads up. But, I mean, it makes sense. The transmit on one side is the receive on the other side. It makes sense, but at first glance, I can see how it would be an easy mistake to connect the receives together and connect the transmits together, but don't do that. Um, and of course, all these instructions, you know, they're in English, but all the figures are in Chinese or something. Um, so what I did was I printed what it looks like once you open, once you open, this is the software right here. PC software change word. This is what you need to open. And once you load that and open it, it looks like this. And you have a choice here. You click on picture or movie or text or adjust date or time. Right here, you need to click that arrow and select English. Uh, because if you don't do that, it's going to look like this. So you need to click there and select English. And right there is the COM port you're on. This is another issue I was having. Uh, I kept trying to load stuff and load stuff, and it kept saying, you know, load failed, unsuccessful. You got to click here and put it on the port that you're on. Uh, that took me, took me uh, a couple of minutes to realize that. So make sure that's on your COM port that you're on. And, um, and then here you have import picture. So, uh, so, I, so for this example, it's in picture mode. You click import picture. And then you can grab whatever picture you want. I, I assume it's got to be a black and white image. I have not tried like just a normal photo of something. I'm pretty sure it's got to be a black and white image. So I downloaded this image. I just went to, uh, to the Google and I just put an image search for black and white subscribe logo or black and white subscribe icon or something. And that came up. So I saved the picture as, put it in my, uh, my images file. And then, uh, so when I clicked import picture, I went to my folder, I clicked the picture that I want, it comes up here, and you just click download picture. Um, again, your thing has to be plugged in, right? Um, click download picture, and it should say download successful. And for text, well, you click where it says text. And for this example, under text, so uh, over here you type in what you want. This is my website, just in case you're curious. If you go there, keep in mind, I know it's dated. It looks old. It looks horrible. Um, it's there. It serves its purpose. 
I honestly, I have not updated my website or done anything with it in probably five years. So it's completely like been abandoned by me, but it's still there. I mean, it works. Um, if you wanted to go there and make a small monetary donation, just click pay now and there's a PayPal thing. I'm just joking. You don't have to do that. Um, unless you want to, I'm not going to stop you, but you know, don't feel like you have to. Um, I was only halfway joking, but again, that's my website. Again, if you go there, don't make fun of it. I know it looks horrible. Um, and then custom fabrications, of course, is my YouTube channel name. So I put in those two here. And of course, this is, shows you how it's going to look on your display. Now you can click here to change your font, but I noticed that that only works for this one. If I click change font here, change font here, nothing happens. I have no clue why. If you experience the same thing, you know, let me know in the comments. Um, but again, once you put your text in, just put download text and it should send it. Again, that has to be on your COM port that you're on. And you got to be plugged in with your USB to TTL thing. And uh, you should be good. All right, so. Um, I think that's it. I really hope I didn't forget anything. Um, it's just It's just one of those things. You know, getting all of this was more difficult and time consuming than actually building the pro the project. I spent more time on that than than, <laughs> than I care to admit. And there's other stuff in here. Um, there was one like PC 2002 modulus software. Um, I, you know, at first I thought maybe that's what I wanted and I downloaded these instructions and I'm thinking, okay, this is what I want. These are my instructions. And all of this is in Chinese. So I actually cut and pasted all this and put it in a, um, put it in a um, Chinese to English editor or converter. And I reprinted the whole thing in English. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is what I want. You can put your pictures in. Um, but no, this is not what you want. This, <laughs> this is for a liquid crystal display. So these are the instructions if you wanted to use the same IC that's on this device to run a liquid crystal display. So there's a ton of stuff in here. Um, like here, we have a chip information. So it's going to tell you what chips are on there. Uh, I haven't fully explored everything in here, but it's almost like they included everything about all the ICs that are on here and different things you can do with them. So there's a ton more stuff here than what you really need. And I think that's a hard part is kind of sorting through what you need and what you don't need. Um, but again, just to kind of, you know, tie it all up, you need this, open it with WinZip, and then you can open up that folder take these, cut and paste them into a, into a different folder so you get rid of the unsupported characters, and then load the software, load your program, load the driver for, for the uh, USB to TTL converter, plug it into your computer, and, um, and just play around with it. The only way I think you can mess it up is if you don't get the connections here correct. Like if you connect the transmits together or you connect the receives together. I think that's about the only way you can really mess it up. Now, one thing is kind of disappointing for me. They didn't give you a way to finalize the build. You got the power supply and all this wiring here. And I look at other builds and all they did was just hot glue it to the base here. And it just, I mean, it works, but it's just not, not ideal. I mean, it just looks horrible. Um, no offense if you did yours that way. I'm sure it looks great. Um... But I don't want to do it that way. What I want to do is I want to drill a hole in the bottom here and feed all the wires through here, put the power supply in the bottom, have these cables come out to the edge, and then build a platform, have like a little standoff with a lower platform. So I want to take another piece of plexiglass and cut that shape and put some standoffs on here. So I've got maybe that thick and then have, again, all the wiring and that power supply down here so it's out of sight and then I'll make a mount to actually mount the switch and the plug like on the edge. And I think that would just be a much cleaner, neater installation and not have all this tape on everything. And I just taped it down so the wires wouldn't snag the little post there. And um, I mean, it does work like this. It just, it looks unfinished. And even if you just hot glued everything down, again, it just looks unfinished. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect power to this, by the way, as far as power goes, I'm using one of these. 
This is just one of those old Radio Shack multiple voltage source power units. I've got it on nine volts, works. I'm sure seven and a half would probably work. Um, I'm not gonna flip it to 12. I don't know if that would fry it or not. Um, make sure your voltage is correct. Uh, center conductor positive, check it with a voltmeter if you have to, uh, because these come apart. So I could flip that around and then it would be backwards. I don't know if this has diode protection. So if you plugged it in backwards, I don't know if it would protect itself or if it would fry itself. Don't find out. If you do know for a fact, you know, put it in the comments and let me know. Um, so let me plug this in and I will kill the lighting a little bit. Um, it comes with the remote and the instructions for the remote are, are on the back page of this. So it tells you which buttons are for um, the inner clock, the inner text, outer clock, outer text, outer movies, inner movies. Uh, by the way, I have not experimented with the, with the movies or animations yet. Um, that's something I still have to play around with. Um, keep in mind, I am not proficient with this yet. I just know more than I knew when I started. And I thought I would just do a video to kind of try to explain things that I wish I knew before I started. So uh, let's turn this thing on and um, see if we can see what it's uh, showing. So we got custom fabrications on the top, but the text is a little bit too big and it overlaps weird. And, um, oh, and it's a lot smoother. I just noticed it's a lot smoother um, in real life than on the camera. Uh, I think like frame rate is kind of messing up or something but um anyway so i think the text is too long and it overlaps weird and i get a weird little shift down there before it comes back up so i'm not quite sure it's happening there so i want to try to redo that and it's also trying to say um blueracecars.com my website along the side but again i think the text is too big and it's hard for that to show um Let's try, there's that, see if we can show that. It doesn't like being tilted. But uh, there's the subscribe button. It's a little bit long. It's a little bit long, but um, I should probably put this flat and hold the camera. That might be a better plan. So let's try that. So there's just the uh, subscribe. Yeah, the frame rate is a little bit messing up, messing it up, which kind of sucks because I was hoping to have that, you know, to finish some of the, some of my videos or whatever. But there's the time and date in Japan or China. There's my website that doesn't show very well. There's another time and date. And there's some kind of, uh, that's the uh, subscribe, but on the blue. For some reason, it puts that on the back side. I'm not quite sure why. Still trying to get used to the various buttons and what they do. Yeah, that might be all I have programmed into it so far. One other thing I need to figure out is... It seems like when I load an image and then I load another image, like it only takes one? I don't know if that's true or not. I gotta play around with it more. But um, anyways, that's kind of it for now, I guess. That's basically what I wanted to show you for now. And um, yeah, the blue subscribe is really stretched out along that side there but yeah I need to play around with it more I need to try loading more things and uh, get used to how it works but um, yeah we'll get it eventually it's kind of a cool project I mean for 35 bucks I mean I can't complain I mean I guess I could but it would be pointless so anyways I'm gonna leave it for now I feel like this video has gotten to be way too long way longer than I wanted it to be so if you decide to build one of these, have fun. 
Good luck. And if you have any questions, you can ask if you want, but I kind of told you everything I know, so I don't know if I'll be able to answer it. So, um, yeah. And if you have any other input that is helpful, put it in the comments for other people to learn from. And um, as always, until next time, thanks for watching.